we will be talking about the, the meaning of adverse selection and we'll be talking about the example of adverse selection. We'll try to understand that using an example. So adverse selection is uh, when one of the party in the transaction has more information than the other party. So sometimes seller might have the more information about the product which he's trying to sell. And sometimes buyers might have more information about the about themselves uh, for the product which they want to buy. Typically, sellers have more information about the quality of the product which they are trying to sell. For example, the used car market. So in the used car market, seller of the bad quality car might paint it from outside, try to sell it like it is a good quality car, something, I mean, which he knows uh, typically for a car, uh, which the buyer doesn't know. Then what happens, we'll look at that. That is one example where seller has the information. The another example where the buyer has more information than the seller is the insurance market. So in the insurance market, what's, what happens is that the buyer might have more information than the seller, because supposedly if I buy insurance, I might have an information about the diseases uh, with which my body is fighting. I might have the inform more information about the tendencies which I have. So if I buy insurance more, uh, if I'm going to buy, I'll have more information about it. And in case of adverse selection, what happens is that the high risk types, they tie, they tend to buy more in, more insurance as compared to the low risk. So what is the way out of that we'll be looking at? So these are the examples which I was talking about the used car market and the insurance market. In the used car market, sellers have more information. While in the insurance market, buyers have more information. And in the insurance market, bad risks, bad risks are who are, are, are what kind of individuals? Those individuals uh, who are suffering from some kind of ailment, some kind of disease, they will, they are more likely to buy insurance because they know that they will be using the hospitalization. They, they are going to uh, have the problem uh, later on in the life with their health. So they will be buying more insurance instead of the good types or the good risks. Achha, what you call as good risk for the insurance company, supposedly if you are a completely healthy individual and if you buy the insurance, you will be paying insurance premium anyhow, regardless of whether uh, something bad happens or not. But then your risk of developing any disease is very low. So it is, it is a benefit to the insurance company. So all companies are there to make benefits. All companies are there to make profits. So you are a good risk for the insurance company. But what happens in general is that the bad risk, they tend to buy more insurance as compared to the good risks, right? As compared to the good risks. Let us also talk about the moral hazard problem. So moral hazard is like, supposedly if I bought the insurance, I bought the fire insurance and uh, I know that uh, this is, since I have bought the fire insurance, I do not have to take care of uh, uh, protecting my house from the fire because in case of the fire, my financial loss is going to be completely taken care of by the insurance company. So I become, rec uh, I become somewhat reckless in my behavior. So I have not taken up any measures to protect my house from the fire. But insurance company doesn't want this. Insurance company doesn't want that your behavior should change just because you have bought the insurance. Otherwise, this is going to be a loss for the insurance company. So if you would have taken up all the measures which you should have taken up, then uh, insurance company would not be facing any loss. But the point is that the people are such, I mean, they tend to become reckless after they have bought the insurance. And the main difference between the two is that adverse selection happens before you buy the insurance, while moral hazard happens after you buy the insurance. So this is also one point which is very important. So please write. So this is something which I was talking about, that adverse selection is something which is happening before the insurance is bought, while moral hazard is something which is happening after the insurance is bought. So keep these things in head. The other is that what is causing adverse selection? So sometimes insurance company, they actually don't know that which one are the bad risks and which one are the good risks. 
So which one uh, are healthy people, but they still want to buy insurance? Those are good risks. Which ones are unhealthy people and uh, they are wanting to buy insurance? Those are bad risks. So an insurance company tries to get around this information asymmetry. For example, in case of the life insurance, they might ask for a complete medical checkup. So in the medical test, it will, it will be all clear that uh, what kind of diseases you are, uh, your, your body is fighting with right now. So in case if you are uh, fighting with the life-threatening diseases, uh, it is uh, highly probable that life insurance company is not going to give you any insurance or the medical insurance company will not be giving you insurance. So that is one way that uh, insurance companies, they tweak around adverse selection. <clears throat> but then there's an, another problem which they face. Government intervention also comes. Government says that no, even if people are fighting with certain diseases, you cannot deny them insurance. You, you give them insurance, right? This is what I have written. So government says this, that uh, even though people are suffering with certain diseases, do not deny them insurance, give them insurance. And don't unnecessarily charge extra premium. Hmm. But then what happens is that in case if these insurance companies are going to charge the same premium, I mean, uniform premium, and mostly bad risk people are buying insurance. So it is a loss for them. Consequently, what these insurance company will do, they will be charging high premiums from everyone, not only from the sick people. So what will happen is that the good risks, those who are healthy but wanting to buy insurance, they will not buy insurance. And the bad risks, those who are unhealthy and buying insurance, they will be buying insurance. And ultimately, the premiums are also going to go high. This is what the effect of adverse selection. This is what I was talking about, that bad risks will be buying insurance while good risk will. Insurance premiums will also go high. In the next class, we'll be talking about the adverse selection problem using a numerical example of a uh, used car market. So where we'll be talking about the lemons market. Huh? So I thought I would be completing it in this video, but I'll do that in the next one. Thank you, Vita.